originally discovered by the U.S. Railroad in 1853, the area was thought to extend all the way to the Colorado River. Natives called this area Mara or Oasis of Mara, but in 1855 Colonel Henry Washington renamed it to 29 Palms. In 1936 it became a national monument and was elevated to Joshua Tree National Park in 1994. Joshua Tree consists of two desert ecosystems, the Colorado Desert, eastern half below 3,000 feet, and the Mojave Desert, western half above 3,000 feet. The western part is more moist, cooler and higher elevation where the Joshua Tree primarily grow. Let's begin with the Ocotillo. The Ocotillo is not a cactus, but a member of South American plants, sometimes called buggy whips which bloom with small red blossoms. To survive the extreme heat and dryness, Ocotillo photosynthesis is done in the stalks and stems, not in leaves like normal plants. You will find the Cholia Cactus Garden in the transition zone between the Colorado and Mojave Deserts. The unusually large number of Cholia in this garden is attributed to terrain which allows for more water to collect.
DNA research, the Joshua tree is really a member of the agave family. Growing 40 plus feet high at a rate of one half a year, the average lifespan is typically 150 years. The Joshua tree is a monocot and in the same group of flowering plants as the orchid. The red and blue banding you see here is called Rayleigh scattering. Here in Joshua Tree you will see it in the early morning, right before sunrise. It primarily occurs when sunlight interacts with randomly located air molecules. The reddening from the sun is intensified near the horizon because the light must pass through more of the atmosphere nearer the Earth's surface, or it is denser. This removes a significant proportion of the shorter wavelength, blue, and medium wavelength, green, light from the direct path to the observer. The remaining unscattered light is therefore mostly of longer wavelengths and appears more red. The October 27 Starlink launch you see here is part of a constellation of 1,440 satellites to build a worldwide internet. Launched on a Falcon 9 booster from Vandenberg Air Force Base. Starlink satellites will be in 72 orbital planes of 20 satellites each. Visible by the human eye at sunset, the launch leaves a contrail that can be seen for about 10 minutes.
Since Holy Grail time lapses capture the entire sky from sunset to sunrise the next morning, you will see continuous moving streaks throughout. These white streaks are aircraft warning lights you see from high altitude coast to coast airliners. The lights up see below the horizon are numerous vehicles moving around the park with their headlights on high beam.